because after the end of the dust storm was the end of the summer, and we desperately had to go someplace to point to the north, uh, because with the rover this dusty, it really needs to be uh, pointed into the sun. So we said, well, here's a view from the north, here's home plate. Uh, so we drove up and found a spot and said, well, home plate isn't actually very high. It's about as high as this table off of the podium. Uh, we said, okay, we can tilt over to the edge of home plate, uh, tilt ourselves to the north, get a bit of power, and if we don't drive around, if we don't do a, oh, that isn't what I wanted. Okay. If we don't do a whole lot, we will, uh, we'll survive the winter. I should have shown this picture maybe a little bit earlier. We had real problems driving at this point, and what here we're showing is just that dragging uh, wheel behind us. Uh, leaves us this white track behind showing very interesting stuff. This is really exciting. Uh, sulfate, which is to say uh, gypsum type salts, uh, underneath the soil. Uh, but also this is a problem. Uh, when we're driving through soft, soft soil, we have quite a bit of problem. Uh, but we found this spot. Here's the view from orbit. Uh, let's see, no, I guess. Yeah, here's the view from orbit. There we are on the north edge of home plate, tilted over. That's sort of paradoxical because when we landed on Mars, the engineers had the rover. They were testing it out. They made sure everything worked. They gave it to us. They gave it to the science team. And they said, here you go. Uh, drive it around. Just don't drive it off any cliffs. So here we are, third winter on Mars. What do we do? We drive over the edge of the cliff. And we drive so well, we drive till it's tilted 30 degrees and then stop, parked, like hovering over the cliff. Fortunately, the cliff's only this high. Well, we waited out the third winter on Mars. Uh, not a whole lot we can do with the rover this dusty, the winter uh, having these short days and long nights and the sun pretty low. Uh, but during that winter, we looked and said, wow, there's a lot of cool stuff down here. We're really waiting for summer. Uh, let's drive down and see these interesting things, a weird-shaped crater, funny bumpy hills, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the summer came, and first thing we discovered was we couldn't drive back up the hill. We were tilted 30 degrees. And we said, well, let's drive back up the hill so we can drive right across here and down to the interesting stuff. We discovered with the dead wheel, we can't drive a 30 degree slope anymore. Uh, so he said, okay, we'll drive down the hill. Drove down the hill into this material. And the first thing we said is, well, okay, we'll drive around this way to the interesting stuff. Look at all this interesting stuff. Uh, nope, couldn't do it. Soil was too soft. We got about here. The wheels were spinning with not much motion. We said, better turn around before we get stuck. Decided to drive around this way, saying, oh, we'll just drive down here to the interesting stuff. Uh, we got that far. Here is our path. Here's where we spent the winter. We got this far. And on Sol 1890 of our 90-day mission on Mars, uh, we got stuck. Well. Here's the view from our HazCam, just showing uh, what it looks like uh, where we're stuck. The sky looks pretty dramatic, but actually most of that is just dust on the lens of the HazCam from that dust storm. Uh, not only did the solar arrays get dusty, but the HazCams, uh, which are the ones close to the wheel, don't have lens covers, so we don't retract them, we don't stow them. Uh, they just sit out there. They got kind of dusty. Well. This wasn't, we hoped, the end of the mission. Uh, so the engineering team spent a lot of time trying to simulate uh, this on Mars, uh, putting some very soft, fluffy soil in, saying, how do we drive in very soft, fluffy soil? The soil, in fact, on Mars is interesting. It's crusty on the top and soft underneath. Sounds like a baking product. Uh, but it's about as soft as flour underneath the crust. So we had broken through the crusty stuff into to very soft stuff underneath. That was our problem. The other problem was it turned out right under the belly of the rover, a place that we could see kind of by putting the robotic arm camera, uh, there was a big rock. So if we dug in too much, if we just spun the wheels and say sooner or later we'll spin and get it out, it would dig us down and it would bottom us out on the rock. So it was very tricky to try to get out of this. We spent a lot of time 
uh, planning. Unfortunately, uh, the planning ate time and it ate up our whole summer trying to get the rover out of this and winter was approaching. Some of you may have seen uh, this cartoon. Here's an XKCD cartoon about uh, Spirit's journey on Mars. It's actually a little bit, a uh, little bit slanderous. So here's the real mission of Spirit. Uh, Spirit was designed to say, well, it's likely to die at 90 solves. But it didn't. I suppose that was totally kicking butt. So we kept on going and we got extra funding from the Mars project and we didn't turn it off. So uh, day about 1890, they were saying they're stuck. We started saying, well, it might be stuck forever. We don't know this for sure. We don't know that we, when we get some more sunlight, we can't get it out. Uh, but they said, well, even if it is stuck, this is an interesting site. This is a site with crusty soil on top, sulfate soil underneath. It's uh, actually a very exciting scientifically. So even if it is stuck, uh, Spirit will be a stationary science platform. Unfortunately, being stuck was only one of our problems. We have one dead wheel. We have another wheel that is dying. So we're getting down to be a four-wheel rover. Uh, we're stuck in one place. It's soft, sandy soil, and winter is coming. With winter coming, we can't tilt to the north. And the rover is not as dusty as it was at the end of the, uh, the bad dust storm, the third summer, but it's still pretty dusty. And dust devils don't come by in the winter. Dust devils in Gusev are a summer and spring phenomena. So we're covered with dust, we're stuck, we can't tilt to the north, days are getting short, and we are in trouble. So, uh, in fact, uh, on May, thir May 13th was the winter solstice, and we stopped having communication on March 29th. Uh, this was not actually the last image we received from the rover. It would have been nice. Uh, but we haven't heard from the rover since the end of March. Uh, this is not a fatal error. We expected to not hear from the rover uh, because we couldn't tilt into the sun. We were very dusty. We weren't getting much power, and it's midwinter right now. The rover is designed that if it doesn't have enough power to turn on the radio to hibernate, it cuts everything off from the solar arrays except the battery and the timer. So it knows what time it is. It knows, and then it just spends all of the energy trying to charge the battery. It's designed to hibernate, and it's designed that when the battery gets charged enough to run the radio, it will communicate again. If it gets worse than that, it will even turn off the timer, and it will just wait until the solar array has enough energy to, uh, to turn on the computer. So it may have gotten bad enough that even the clock uh, has turned off but it's designed to wake up when it gets enough power. So depending, and we don't know, of course, what the status of the rover is, but if it's still alive, if it's still working, we should hear from it maybe any time, but probably not till September. Uh, as you can see, uh, spring doesn't actually come till November 13th. So around November 13th, we should be getting a lot more solar energy, uh, we should, with luck, be getting some dust devils coming by. Maybe they'll clean us off. So uh, let's hope we'll hear from the rover September, maybe November. Stay tuned. Meanwhile, though, we have two rovers. On the other side of the planet, we had a rover exploring this site. Uh, and this was exciting. But after a while, we said, well, what else is there? So here's our view. This is the entire Opportunity mission so far. In fact, uh, the little crater eagle is so small you can't even see it on this view. So here is where we've been, but shrink that down a little bit. We can get an image from uh, the orbiters that shows a lot more stuff. And here's what's off in the distance. Now this is quite a ways away. Uh, 22 kilometers to get to, this, to this diameter of this crater. Uh, 
and it's about seven miles away, and these rovers move at about half a centimeter a second when they're booking. Uh, so, but we looked at it and said, wow, that's a really big crater. Uh, it'll take us about two years to drive to that. But what the heck, we've got a rover, uh, we got the keys, or we got some time, let's get driving. <laughs> so, in fact, for the last over the last year we have been driving. Uh, we just completed a marathon. Uh, so we've had one marathon worth of distance on opportunity. Uh, and we're about halfway there. Interestingly, this territory is really the most boring territory. It is flat as far as the eye can see. Some places underneath these sand ripples you can see some bedrock. Uh, but really there's not a whole lot of rocks on the surface of the sand. In fact, you look at a rock and you say, where the heck did that dark, dark rock come from? What is a dark rock doing sitting on the top of the sand here? Well, it turns out uh, we've been seeing a lot of rocks, and when we see rocks on top of the sand, a lot of rocks, I mean every mile or so we see a rock sitting on top of the sand. Uh, in fact, they're meteorites. This particular one, this is the first rock that we saw sitting, uh, sorry, second rock we saw sitting on top of the sand. We named it Block Island. Uh, it's a nickel-iron meteorite. Uh, look at that. In fact, it looks just like the one in, uh, I'm, uh, actually, I'm confusing rocks. This is Block Island. This is that rock, that black rock that we just saw. Uh, it's a meteorite. Uh, here's another one. This was the first, uh, the second rock we saw. This is a nickel iron meteorite, uh, just sitting on top of the surface. And as we discover, is there's a lot of them. I showed you this image before, uh, but if you zoom up, uh, look at this rock. It's not one of these dark volcanic rocks. Uh, this rock actually is shiny. In the infrared, it's almost perfectly shiny. This is another chunk of metal. Uh, we've now seen a lot of chunks of metal sitting on the surface of Mars. Uh, some of these have been 500 pounds and more. Big chunks of nickel iron. This is actually a significant fact if we're going to colonize Mars. On Earth, Iron making actually isn't very hard. People learned to do it at the beginning of the Iron Age, uh, thousands of years ago. Uh, but it takes quite a bit of resources. On Mars, apparently, if you want to find nickel iron, you just sort of walk around and there are chunks of it that are as big as a quarter of a ton just lying on the surface. So Mars is resource rich. Uh, here are resources you can just turn into steel uh, very, very easily. Uh, it would be high nickel steel, but that's okay. There's a lot you can do with high nickel steel. So uh, pay attention. We've seen a lot of these. Uh, Mars has free iron just sitting on the surface. Earth doesn't, by the way, because these guys rust pretty fast. So if one of these fell on Earth, uh, within a couple hundred years it would be rusted away. Uh, Mars, however, things don't rust very fast. Uh, but here's our traverse map. Let me show you sort of where we are right now. Uh, here's where we've been going, sort of driving, driving south. Here we are. Uh, actually, this is the 1808 map. There we are, I think, right now. This is our current, our current location. So 2315, uh, we took. This is the overhead view, uh, and there we are. So this is the territory, what it looks like, is we do see bedrock from time to time over these ripples. And off here in the horizon, that is our goal. Uh, those are the tips of the mountains that are at the edge of Endeavor Crater. Uh, here's that same image uh, in a little bit stretched color. You can see those mountains in the distance a little bit clearer. Uh, we are stopping every kilometer or so to do some science to look at the bedrock. Uh, we're stopping, of course, whenever we see one of these rocks that so far has turned out mostly to be meteorites. And actually, uh, last weekend, uh, about a week ago tomorrow, uh, we saw this from Mer Meridiani. It's the first time we have ever seen a dust devil. This is a highly stretched image, by the way. This is the ground. Uh, that's the sky, and that's a dust devil. All of the dust devils we've seen so far has been...